Hey kids, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, the host and content executive here at Higher Things. And today we're going to be talking about some of the things that you'll see in church on Sunday. And one of the things that you might see in church this Sunday is the Feast of St. James, the brother of our Lord. James has that epistle that Luther kind of took a little bit of issue with, but there's really awesome stuff there. And you might just maybe, maybe even hear a sermon on James chapter one, where James, the brother of our Lord writes, count it a joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. And that sounds terrible because we hate the trials. We hate the pain. We hate the evil, the temptation, the failure, the sin. We hate all of it. Really, uh, a, a vast majority of our prayers are sort of rooted in the idea that if I I were God, I would do things different. And so really what I need to do is convince God that I am right and he is wrong so that he will do things my way and I will not hurt. That idea that we would not hurt, it's found underneath every prayer of every creed, of every religion, of every person, believer or unbeliever alike. We don't like how things are, but you faithful Christians, brethren, are called to count it a joy when you face trials of various kinds. Every wave of doubt that rocks us, it comes though from being pulled in two separate directions because, well, I want to want the things that God tells me to want. I want to be near God, but I also just really want to not need him anymore. God, just take away from me every last trial and temptation that would ever pull me towards hurt. And well, then I won't need you anymore. We run from all of the places that God places himself to actually help us. We sink trying to climb out of these pits ourselves. This is where our God is found, though. Trials of various kinds. See, that's that's the whole point inside of this. Uh, When we are faced with trials of various kinds, we get to actually look at the first commandment. You shall have no other gods and realize you're not God. You're also not supposed to be God. And so the idea of just wanting to control everything to get rid of all of the trials, well, that's, that's idolatry, and we're called to repent from that. But more than that, we recognize that if we're not God, We actually have a God who wants to be our God. See, that's the whole point of you shall have no other gods. God is insisting, I want to be God for you. And you have a God who also places himself into various trials for you. You have a God who is not far from suffering, but actually places himself right in the middle of it. Here, we are allowed to be afraid. We are allowed to hurt. We are allowed to hate it. And we are allowed to find our God right in the pit with us, near to the brokenhearted suffering for us to love you, even in spite of your own sins that have often put you in those trials and temptations of various kinds, but to seek out your pains, your sins, your torments, your death, and bear that on a cross for you. This is who your God is. When there are trials of various kinds, he's close by, not far away. God doesn't wait in heaven for us to escape the trials. He dives down and bears them for us. This is what Christ does so that Christianity could be more than a guilt trip about suffering where you pretend to be happier than you are because Jesus... Now you have finally a foundation to actually stand upon. This is not about escaping trial or putting on a brave face. This is about finding Jesus in the middle of it. And here, when we are sheltered by him, protected by him, we can finally stand steadfast. We can be helped and held steady. This is where we can find a God who is merciful toward us even when we have no idea what's going on and cannot for the life of us save ourselves. He joins us in suffering so that our suffering doesn't save us. His suffering does. Our suffering does not bring us closer to God, but it points us to where Christ works the most powerful miracle of all. He dies on the cross and rises from the dead for you. This is who your God is and what he has come to do. I will be near to the brokenhearted, he says, not just silent as sort of moral support while you carry it yourself, but as the one who suffers for you. And here he cries out, it is finished. You are even now held against every wave and wind, and you have given, you've been given the, the truths of God, the, the true doctrines, the, the, the hopeful promises that he makes to you that he will never leave you nor forsake you, that in the midst of all of the things that we really do wish would go away, we can stand firm. And even counted a joy, not because feeling bad feels good, but because when you suffer, Christ is near and Christ is conquered. And so if I am near to Christ, thanks be to God. That's what we're going to look for in church this Sunday.